In this video, revealing how to make money on Amazon FBA and how complete beginners earning $100 to $700 a day with no experience. More at that after the intro. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? Mike Vasile here. Welcome to this video. Before we actually begin, I remind you that several spots have opened up for this week's free workshop where it's the fastest and easiest way to make money online. Sign up for it in the link below. We literally have a 62 year old woman go from zero to $160,000 in profit in as little as 90 days. So check it out right now. So, one of the reasons why I got started with the Amazon FBA was because I just wanted more freedom in my life. You know, I was a broke college student studying to become a dentist, and here I was living off of the ramen noodle diet, the dollar menu diet, literally having no money to my name and being ashamed that I didn't even have the money to go ahead and for example, hang out with friends or to pay off my credit card bills or to you know pay off my student loan debt. And on top of that, I had no time whatsoever to actually go ahead and get started and maybe you know get another job or doing other things that could maybe you know make me more money because literally all my time was like into my job and into my studies. So when I saw the fact that I could literally make money with Amazon by literally partnering with them and having them do all the hard work like shipping, handling, the customer service, like fulfillment, and all I had to do was pick a right product to go ahead and find that would go ahead and sell and I could go ahead and make passive income from online, I extremely got excited and dug deep into how to actually become profitable with Amazon. And the crazy thing about that is after like a lot of failures, trials and tribulations, we got to the point where we're actually making several hundred dollars a day in profit and this is exactly what I wish I knew when I was first getting started. And the first step is really putting all my attention on the right product to go ahead and find. Now one thing that I did wrong when I first got started in Amazon FBA was I was like, whoa, I could literally just go ahead and sell anything. So I literally spent like a bunch of money that I did not have. I went to a site like for example, Alibaba and I bought a bunch of dog leashes just because I thought it was cool, right? And when I shipped it to Amazon for the first time, you know, no one ended up buying and I literally got heartbroken and almost gave up because I was like, oh my God, this doesn't work, right? So do not make the same mistake that I did and instead do some things known as product research. What I like doing now is going to like the best sellers on Amazon and literally anybody could go ahead and do this. And the crazy thing about this is this is updated hourly. And what you don't understand, like for example here, you know, now that I live in Bali and I have multiple online businesses, I started interviewing really successful people, right? Some of them like this 11 year old girl that turned on $30 million, this guy that makes a million dollars per month, and even other people that make a lot of money with Amazon, and they spend a lot of money in just testing products, right? Some of them even spend upwards to like $5,000 to test. Now, if I knew that getting started, I wouldn't have had the ability to go ahead and succeed because I didn't have that money, right? Remember, I was on the ramen noodle diet and the dollar menu diet, right? So what I learned that I could do is I could actually leverage the fact that other people are spending their own money and testing which products works for them and I could just piggyback on what they're already doing without actually having to spend my own money. So I would come into all of these categories and I would just find like a category that I wanted to be in. So let's say home and kitchen, right? And not only that, but they'll tell you all the top ones that are selling right now on Amazon. What I like doing is even going more specific into here. Like if I come into here and see that it goes even deeper, I could go into kitchen, kitchen and dining. And then I could go even deeper, like for example, something like bakeware. So as you can see, I'm like multiple categories deep, one, two, three categories deep, but I can even go even deeper and go to bakeware sets. Right? And the more deeper you get in terms of these categories, the less competition for someone that's completely new that doesn't have a big startup budget can actually go ahead and get started. So one of the things that I would naturally do is just find out what works and what doesn't work based off of what's selling. And the most important thing that I would enjoy doing is if I was coming up to here, say I wanted to go ahead and sell something like this because I know these bakeware sets do really well. Um, what I would do before actually finding the supplier of this product, I would actually go to the ratings and see what people are complaining about because if they're complaining about a specific topic that this product isn't really doing for them, you could actually find your unique selling point when you go ahead and you know sell on Amazon FBA. Now the crazy thing about it is they say, okay, rust alert, right? So a lot of people that buy complain about this rust problem. So before I even do anything, I would go ahead, for example, to Alibaba, which is where a lot of people on Amazon FBA go ahead and for example, find the suppliers. I would go and type in bake, wear, set, but the most important thing is when I start negotiating with the people from you know China, I would get a sample of this sent directly to me. Most of the times all you gotta do is cover the shipping and I would actually test it myself to see if it rusts 
for the specific supplier. That way, if I know it doesn't rust, then I could actually put it in, you know, to this exact uh, title and say, okay, a six feet non-stick, uh, non-stick, non-rust oven bakeware baking set. That way, people that are already looking for bakeware sets but have the pain points of, oh my god, you know, like it rusts. I don't know if I actually go want to go ahead and want this. You know, they're going to be more attracted to that specific offer that you go ahead and do. So that is the first level that I would like doing. You know, I did this back in the day, for example, with grill mats, right? I came into here and I noticed, oh, let me go ahead and um, do like some bakeware stuff. And I saw something like this, right? And one of the things that, you know, I saw in the reviews is like, this is great for the oven, but I wish I had something for the grill, right? And I literally got it from one of the reviews. So I went over to, for example, um, Alibaba and did the exact same thing. I was like, okay, well, are there things known as grill mats? And I was like, okay, let me go ahead and try doing this. And then I found this product, which was one of my initial winners that started getting me to several hundreds of dollars a day in revenue, right? And we reinvested and reinvested and we scaled to several hundred dollars a day in profit, right? But that was the craziest thing. I literally got that from looking at the best sellers thing. Other places that you could go ahead and do it is, for example, watchcount.com because it's the popular products on eBay. And what you guys gotta realize, well, okay, people are going to Amazon to go ahead and buy things, right? But people are also going to eBay and buying things. And they're both e-commerce sites. So what I can find is if I find something popular on eBay, if they're not doing as well on Amazon, that means that maybe there's not that much competition and I can succeed in there. One of the examples is this, look at this, there's 5,000 watchers that want this turquoise heart necklace. If I come in here and, for example, search the exact same thing and type in turquoise heart necklace, you could see exactly what are the, competit- the competitors that are into here. You see that some of these only have like 14 reviews and they're on the first page for that search term. This is only 35 reviews and they're selling for $88. This is insane, Tw- $14. And it, this is just like a good example because look at this, some of these have very little reviews but they're already on the first page for that keyword. If I just come into here and type in turquoise heart you can see that they have several turquoise heart necklaces and stones and whatnot, and some of these are only like $2 a piece or $3 a piece or $1 a piece, and you can see other different examples. One of the things that I also like doing when I go ahead and search for this is going to places like AliExpress and also doing the same testing, right? Because I can do something like turquoise jewelry, and one of the things that I can do is sort everything by orders, because then I know that that is the most popular thing that's being sold right now out of like in terms of e-commerce. And as you can see, all of these other things start popping up on AliExpress where you could actually find like, oh, maybe if these get like, for example, all of these sales, like 3,000 sales, maybe I could go ahead and do that. You can even come into jewelries and, se- and accessories in general in the categories and sort everything by orders itself, right? Or go to like, for example, the homepage and uh, look at any one of these things. Like for example, if I go to here to like jewelry and then I go ahead and type in um, all of these jewelry accessories, I can sort everything by orders and I can see exactly what are the most popular things right now. I mean, this got 16,000 sold. This got like 21,000 sold. Um, This is like a Fox Free minimalist sterling ring. So that's like pretty interesting. Uh, This one is like another double layer like ring. So I can see that these things are going popular. This is a butterfly ring and it's 15,000 sold. This is like uh, Thunderbolt earrings, which is 11,000 sold. So I can literally start testing some of these things out here and just, you know, cross-referencing them with Amazon and typing in the exact same thing like butterfly uh, necklace and seeing, okay, well, what is the competition doing right now on you know, uh, these specific keywords? Now, as you can see, some of these, this is a little bit more highly competitive, so maybe butterfly necklace might not actually be the thing. But I noticed that butterfly is popular, so what if I just type in, for example, butterfly uh, earrings, right? And then I could sort everything by, for example, orders. And as you can see, here's one that got sold 29,000 times. So because I got the idea from, you know, looking at, you know, other websites, like for example, AliExpress, I could come in here and type in, for example, butterfly necklaces and seeing if there's competitors that are actually doing the exact same thing. You know, some of these actually, you know, don't have that much reviews. Like for example, some of these only have 178 um, and none of these are actually earrings in general or actually let's do earrings. 
If we go and type in earrings, this looks like a lot less competitive. You know, this one's only 17 reviews. Some of these are only like 100 reviews um, compared to the thousands. So maybe, you know, this could actually be a selling point. This one's 16 reviews and it's on the first page, right? But it's a completely different product than this one. So you could find a way to come in and start succeeding by just finding a better product. The second level that you wanna do the moment you go ahead and do that is you wanna find out what is actually selling on Google Trends. So if you have an idea, remember the most important part is product research. You don't wanna go ahead and invest in a product that might not actually make a sale. So you wanna go ahead and plug this in Garcinia Cambogia and see how it did in the past five years. Now Garcinia Cambogia is like one of those things that like you know people's moms watch on Dr. Oz and Dr. Oz went and recommended it and everyone started selling these on Amazon FBA. But this was five years ago. As you can see, it is on a dying trend. So if you got started now, it probably would not be the best thing. But when I got started with grill mats and I started sending it over to Amazon, I was like, why am I not getting any sales? I was kind of like depressed until I found out that grill mats are actually seasonal. Like if I look at grill mats, you can check out the craziest thing. They actually go peak in literally May, June, and July and start dropping in fall. When I thought that it was actually more popular in the fall, because that's like, you know, hoodie weather, um, people having bonfires, having more barbecues. So I just assumed that that's when the best time to sell grill mats was, but little did I know that it's literally, for the past five years, consistently had a consistent trend. And knowing this can allow you to have more patience when you go ahead and launch things. The next step that I started doing before I even started shipping them to Amazon is I need to find you know people to go ahead and help me create a logo. Because when you go ahead and negotiate people with Alibaba, the coolest thing is they can help you with packaging, they can help you with branding, they even can put like private um, custom inserts for you in the specific products. So what you could actually do is go to Fiverr and you can find people for really cheap to create like a nice logo for you for as little as like $5. You know, some of these are a little bit more expensive, but if you keep on scrolling, there's some hidden winners in here where you know they can do a modern minimalist luxury brand logo for like as little as 15 bucks. That way you don't need to have you know, any type of skill of design, but you could have like some type of better branding. So that's the first thing that I do. I, I got a logo and had them go ahead and design it uh, for me on Fiverr. The second person that I ended up doing um, was getting these things known as product photography pictures. I would get people to go ahead and take pictures of like my product and ship it to them the moment I would get the samples from China. And it could be as little as like, for example, $10. Another gig that I would also go ahead and buy um, from Fiverr would be like, for example, Amazon Photo. If I go ahead and type in Amazon Photo, you need some of these like black and white, or these white background images. And some of these ones, you know, they could literally take the picture of uh, what your photographer did and they could edit out the background. So it's just pure white. So it literally looks like something like this, you know, where it's just like a simple white background because Amazon does have its like certain characteristics that you need to buy by, right? And just like doing that alone, you know, you could start succeeding with Amazon FBA. But if you wanna go more of an advanced level, here are some of the other people that you might need to hire the moment you start making money. Because I realized, okay, well, if I wanted to go ahead and scale this business, I need to go and take the money that I make with this, once I make several hundred of dollars a day, and find the right people to go ahead and hire. The next hires I made, like for example, was Upwork.com, and I would get somebody to help me write the Amazon listing. What an Amazon listing is, is like when you go into any one of these things, they're the ones that really get good at like what keywords to put in the title. Notice that they have all these keywords, chain earring bar stud with chain. They do the research for you. And they go ahead and write all of this if you aren't a good writer, right? You could literally get some writers to go ahead and write it for you really cheap, as well as helping you with the description and the ranking of things. Uh, one of the things that I like doing is, for example, going to the Philippines and hiring people from the Philippines because not only are they the cheapest, but you could get like really high quality people for Amazon that has a 100% job success rate for literally $7 an hour. Another person is known as Amazon PPC. Uh, these are the ones that are running advertising campaigns on Amazon. These are kind of like when you see um, on here sponsored ads. Like if I come into here, you notice that some of these are actually sponsored. Like when I was selling the grill mat, you know, we could run ads to it and as you see the sponsor thing is there, they did all the keyword research and they literally put me on the first page for that search term. And the moment I did that, I was able to start scaling. But of course, I ended up pivoting because of the fact that it was profit intensive, like all the profit that I ended up doing for Amazon FBA, I literally needed to invest 
into you know more products, which is why I pivoted into a new hybrid model where it allowed me to actually scale an online business like Amazon without actually having to worry about the cost of the inventory while still actually having similar passive income streams like you would do with Amazon. And as you can see with that new method, in the past 30 days, we've actually netted about $49,000 net but the craziest thing is in the past seven days alone, we've actually netted about $11,000 net without actually needing to worry about physical product inventory. And if you need to know exactly how I did that, then make sure you sign up for this week's free workshop because we have a 62 year old woman go from zero to 160 grand profit in 90 days, as well as check out my podcast of all these successful people that live here in Bali, like this 11 year old girl that turned on $30 million and this guy that makes a million dollars per month, check it out right here and right here. Hope this helps, love you guys, see you guys later. You.